Welcome to another episode of Optic Street Debates. Uh, m myself, Theodor, and Andras. We will discuss today uh, a whole category of products. We will try to outline the most basic features and most common features of products which are listed in the category of hunting range finders. So these are range finding monoculars, but they're made for hunting purpose. Uh, I think Andras, you uh, gathered most of the questions regarding this topic and I will help you um, so that we combine combinedly find all the answers for the most uh, common questions regarding this type of products. Yeah, I did go through our emails and I uh, gathered some of the most commonly asked questions. And uh, I think that it's great to start this debate with the basics. So what are the, some of the general features of rangefinders? Well, the rangefinders are small monoculars which have an integrated laser system inside so that they measure the distance. Uh, we have a couple of different groups of rangefinders depending on what kind of use they are most suitable for. And here on the table, most of them, what we see here now, are uh, hunting uh, rangefinders, except for this one. This one is for golfing. We also know uh, special rangefinders made for um, archery. This one, I think, can also be used for archery. And a really tiny group of uh, products of rangefinders which are specifically made for forestry. So the basics for the hunting rangefinders are that they're really small, compact, usually waterproof, because we know that most of the, well, not most, but it can happen quite often on, uh, while hunting that uh, there is rain or any kind of other elements. So the hunting rangefinders need to be uh, waterproof, small, compact, and they usually also feature some sort of the ballistic um, software inside so that it help, uh, they help hunter to shoot on longer ranges. Uh, this type of uh, rangefinders can also be used for shooters. So for shooting on, on distances, on, on shooting ranges where you don't know exactly the distances, again, most of the shooters then use uh, hunting rangefinders like this on the table. Um, so basically, small, compact, waterproof, uh, fogproof, normally filled with uh, dry nitrogen or argon, uh, and usually they come with some sort of the ballistic software. So the ballistic software, by that you mean uh, that it can measure equivalent horizontal range, or is uh, there some addition to it? I, I would say that at the moment all these hunting rangefinders are in three different tiers. The first tier are just classical, the most affordable hunting rangefinders, which just give, give you the line of sight. So they give you the distance uh, to the target in the line of sight. This is the first tier without any ballistic software or anything. Then the second tier are all those devices which give you also the equivalent horizontal range. That means the component, the horizontal component of the distance. So they give you the line of sight and if you're angling them under, the, under an angle, if you're using them under an angle, either down or up, they give you also the horizontal component of this distance. So equivalent horizontal range because only the equivalent horizontal range uh, affects the bullet drop. So if, if the line of sight is let's say 300 meters, the equivalent horizontal range can be only 220 if the, if the angle is steep enough. So uh, if I can interrupt you, this is perhaps very useful for those hunters who hunt in the, hunt in the mountains. Yeah. But mm -hmm. there are a lot of angle shots. Yeah. Yeah, in the, in the plains normally this is not yeah, possible, of course, of course. but uh, when you're hunting in the mountains or shooting in the mountains, normally it can happen that you shoot under a steep angle, either down or up, or up and then only the horizontal um, component of the distance or equivalent horizontal range, equivalent horizontal distance, is the distance which you need to know for the, to apply the proper bullet drop compensation either through the reticle or on the clicks, mm -hmm. but you no need to know the equivalent horizontal range. Some of them also correct this equivalent horizontal range with some additional factors so that you get an even more accurate uh, distance for the ballistic calculations. So this is the second tier. And then the third tier are those devices like Leica, for instance, where you are able to input 
or even there are also, uh, let's say, the Zigzar uh, 2400 model, uh, where you input your real ballistic data into the device, and the device doesn't only give you the equivalent horizontal range, but it also gives you the exact number of clicks, how many clicks you need to apply. Such devices with really advanced um, ballistic software integrated in that, into them, they also take into the account the uh, air pressure, uh, altitude, air temperature, and moisture. I think some of them also moisture. So it basically takes into account all the elements, the angle and the distance that you get, the exact number of clicks you need to dial on your scope to have a direct hit. Uh, like as one of such producers, uh, Zigzauer is another of, uh, of such producers, and now it's getting more and more uh, common that you're able to pair your smartphone with such device so that you immediately get all the readings and all the ballistic data on your smartphone. So these naturally fall into the category of premium uh, rangefinders yeah. and you have to pay a, a, a little bit more. Yeah, they're a top, tier. Yeah, top they're tier. Top tier. The ZigZauer is exp especially expensive, but I would say devices like this you have to consider paying in 2018 if you're watching this video in uh, I don't know, three years from now. From now, then maybe the situation will change, but at the moment, in 2018, the price for such devices is around 800, 900 euros and up for the Ziggs already 1,500 euros. So these are the top tier of, of all hunting laser rangefinders uh, because these devices offer everything. So the, the top tier, they offer ballistic software integrated, uh, uh, all the distance measurements and they also give you the equivalent horizontal range, they take into account all the elements and so on. So in three tiers, no software, basic software with only equivalent horizontal range and really, really advanced software with all the element, elemental um, uh, parameters and all the calculations and everything and even Wi-Fi connectivity and so on. So depending on your needs, you choose the, yeah. the device. Okay, so our, our customers, they're often perplexed or let's say confused uh, by terms such as first uh, target priority mode mm -hmm. and distant target priority mode. Can we perhaps say something a little bit on this topic? With most of the hunting laser rangefinders, the first target priority mode is the mode which you need. Mm -hmm. Because it can happen many times that, that the animal stands in front of the let's say of a forest or in front of a hill, but you need a distance to the animal, not to the trees behind it, not to the hill behind it and so on. So the first priority, first target priority mode is, is a must have in these devices. And I would say all of them which cost more than 300 or 400 euros have this, at least to my knowledge or majority, at least devices in this category of hunting uh, laser rangefinders. Um, so that means that you get a reading from the animal, not from something behind the animal. Um, let's say a, a typical situation is a cornfield and a fox standing in front of a cornfield. And it's really hard to, to assess how far from the cornfield the, the fox is. So it can be 50 meters, it can be 70 meters or even more. And in such situations when you aim at the fox with a laser rangefinder, you need to get the first target, so the fox, you need to get the reading of the distance to the fox and not to the cornfield behind it. And this is something why in hunting this is a, a feature which you desperately need. Well, it's the only thing that you really need. Um, this is the first thing and we can also mention that some of these hunting um, laser rangefinders, even though it's not so necessary, they also offer a feature which is called scan mode. That yes. means that you hold down the, the button and when you move the laser rangefinder, it just reads continually, continually the distance, measure distance. This is probably great when the, the, the animal moves yeah. and you can track the movement of the animal. Or if you want to see the surroundings, how far distant objects are and so on. I personally almost never use scan mode. I always need just first priority mode. Uh, in the older days, the older devices also had a rain mode. That means when when it was raining, yeah. you needed to, to switch to the rain mode so that it uh, took into the account that uh, the laser beam 
is going through all the droplets and so on. But uh, the new models mostly have this uh, built in so that the device automatically detects when it's raining and switches the, um, the operation to the rain mode without uh, user uh, without the need for the user to change anything on the device. I have one more, more, one more question here. Is there any delay uh, that occurs when you click the button and then you have to wait some time to get the reading? Yeah, this delay, it's, um, it's common with more affordable laser rangefinders. So if you buy something a little bit more affordable, more basic, then the distant measurement can even take to, let's say, up to one second or half a second. But with more advanced models, with better models, with more expensive models, this time becomes smaller and smaller and smaller, so shorter. Yes. So basically with a really advanced model like this, you just push the button and you get the reading immediately. With something a little bit more cheaper, you have to wait a little bit. So this is where you see the quality. You also see the quality in the optical part itself. So the more expensive models are usually optically better if we don't take into account the, the laser system itself. So only for observation and in low light, you get a better image in those models which are more expensive, usually at least. Um, and from, from properties which are also common to hunting uh, laser range finders, I would say that uh, in appearance, many of them are uh, uh, coated with rubber and all of them are green color, so this is a typical hunting color. So you see them immediately, that they are a little bit more robust with, with rubber everywhere and in green or in black color. And they basically fit in every pocket. Uh, yeah, yeah. They're really compact, really small. Mm -hmm. Normally when you go on a hunt, you put them somewhere, they have to be light and durable so that you're all, always able to use them in the field. Basically, these would be all the questions that I've accumulated, so... I hope we didn't forget something. If we did, please use comments. We will uh, reply as soon as possible. And we will be even glad if you send us any questions. Um, if you like the video, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. And thank you for watching. Bye. Thank you very much. Bye.